Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sim back with another episode of the Sim Squad. Hi! So, continuing my 12 days of Christmas, I have decided to do not five because I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't agree on five fragrances. So I've chosen seven Kiali fragrances. Like I really, really wanted to do just five guys but like they're like some ogs that i just have to include in the ranking and like i couldn't just like i mean just the oudgasm like three of them are just my favorites from that right and i i can't like you know so i needed to be like so picky with these perfumes and finally i have for you i'll try not drop these eh i'm already dropping them one sec yeah, it's not happening. I was trying to pick them up together. Okay, something like that. So these are like seven 10 ml bottles. I have all the Kiali perfumes, including the recent one, the lychee. It's all like right there. There are like quite a few of them now. And I always get the 10 mls and I'm waiting for the right pricing so I can buy full bottles of the ones I like. So let's start with the first one, which I wanted to keep it as the OG, right? And we all know which one that is. Like I don't even have to look at the color of the bottle to know which one it is. It's Vanilla 28. Now this is everybody's vanilla layering fragrance or wearing vanilla by itself. This is a very boozy vanilla, like a bourbon vanilla. Oh, like it's brown sugar and vanilla. That's it. There's nothing more, nothing less. It's called an Ambery Vanilla. On Fragrantica, it's got like 4.26. And I think this is like the most popular Kiali fragrance and the most sold Kiali fragrance ever. People say it smells like Victoria's Secret Bear Vanilla. I'm sure there are perfumes that smell like this because this is not a very original DNA, but this is one that lasts for very long and acts like a layering uh, scent like perfectly well. The top notes for this are Vanilla Orchid, Jasmine, middle notes of brown sugar and tonka beans and the base notes of amber, amber wood, musk and patchouli. Like in my opinion, yeah, there is a little bit of amber, like uh, I'm sure the other things are there as well. But in my opinion, this is just brown sugar, vanilla, tonka beans and amber. This one is vanilla 28. That means it took them 28 tries to perfect this uh, formula. It's definitely unisex because it can be used on its own and it can be used as a layering fragrance. For me, this one is like a perfect layering fragrance. The moment I feel like having any kind of creamy, uh, dark vanilla, this is the one I go to, like sweet vanilla. I don't want to talk too much about it because it's like plain and simple, exactly what it smells like, the name vanilla, right? This is a 10 out of 10 for me. Like there's nothing better than this perfume. In the entire KLE, if I had no choice and to pick just one, it would be this one, hands down. The projection for this is a decent like two and a half, three feet. Uh, longevity I would say is like six hours because it is like a skin scent it projects for a little while and then it like you know just becomes a skin scent which is why it's perfect for layering it smells like a bakery like a you know the ingredients like the pantry where they keep all the flour and the um, vanilla essence and everything sugar and stuff like it's all like that can you see how it stay whoa that literally just flew out of my hand I don't know if you can see this or not but it stains because it's dark, you know, and the vanilla is like really matured. So it's like super dark in my bottle as well. The next one. Wait, let me not do this one first because then I will not be able to smell anything else. Actually, you know, all of them are going to be like that. So you know what? Forget it. I'll just do this one. So this is the vanilla oud from the oudgasm collection. And it took them 36 tries to make this one. This one is probably the best vanilla oud out there. <laughs> so this is not your typical vanilla oud right this is like the oud is so minuscule in this plus it's like a super high quality oud and i can't explain it to you because it doesn't smell banyari it smells like wood and oil like it smells thick it smells like like the perfume makes you feel like the perfect balance between something cool like saffron or something the heaviness of the vanilla sweetness heaviness and then you have this extract of like very good oud wood the top notes for this are pear praline and saffron middle notes of bulgarian rose and the base notes of cashmere wood vanilla sugar white mask oak moss and oud my goodness this perfume is like an addiction like you wear this once and then you will not go back it's so gorgeous 
these are the most the priciest of all her perfumes and they're only available in 10 ml and 50 ml because of the pricing and the reason why is because of the high quality nature of the oud if an oud is like of a very high variety it's not going to be cheap like some of the ouds the oils they go in millions like there's some very rare ones you know and then there's some that are like grown in like very specific conditions and they they are not available everywhere that's why when you smell these the entire oudgasm collection you will not feel the oud like you've smelled before like it's nothing that you've smelled before because these kind of ouds are only available in like super expensive perfumes so i'm i'm down with this one this is like a gorgeous oud vanilla it's sweet at the same time it's luxurious it smells expensive it smells like a, a rich person's perfume you know obviously because of the kind of oud they've used and it's like a perfect blend of this creaminess oud darkness and like i would wear this like all the time but frankly speaking for everybody else i think um it would be a dress up perfume so 10 out of 10 hands down it can be any weather evening time or night time it's a unisex perfume like in UA this would be considered as unisex although maybe elsewhere it would be like a feminine fragrance uh, the projection is like a good four feet and the longevity is like amazing it goes up to like eight hours I love this one like this one was one of my favorites in the whole lot and I knew even when it was announced without even like knowing I just knew the names and I just knew that the vanilla one would be my favorite Next up is another one from Oud Gasm. I'm so sorry. I just have to because they were so good. This one, I promise, this is the last one from the Oud Gasm collection. This is the Cafe Oud. And of course, like, because I was so afraid that this would sub smell something like Montal's Intense Cafe, that I was actually like worried. I'm like, please don't be one of those, you know? And because Montal's Intense Cafe was such a popular fragrance that everybody was duping it. But of course, nothing smells like exactly like Montal's Intense Cafe. I do want to try the ristretto version as well because like that's apparently like more coffee but I don't know because of late I've been kind of like getting like upset with coffee and I don't want to smell it because French coffee kind of gave, gave me this PTSD kind of thing going on and I do not want to smell like that anymore so this one it smells like a different kind of oud this is a heavier oud it almost smells like woods like it's very woody the other one was more like an extract like an oil kind of thing this one smells like woods and it's very, very, very woody. Plus you have that coffee note, but it's like coffee. It's not the coffee grounds. It's the actual coffee bean, you know, so it's not smelling heavily of coffee. Plus it's creamy. Like, so I like the fact that it's like a creamy coffee instead of like that Copico candy, like coffee, which everybody puts like the Americano or espresso more like it. This is considered to be a floral on Fragrantica, which is like blows my mind how it is classified as a floral. Top notes are bergamot, mandarin, and cappuccino. Middle notes of geranium and rose damascena. And the base notes of vanilla, Madagascar, white musk, patchouli, and oud. Oh, completely different kind of scent. Yes, the rose and geranium are like peeking out like quite a bit, you know. So obviously it's like a slightly rosy scent. But like when I expected an oud, which is a cafe oriented one, I was expecting a rose in it, just like the Montal's uh, Intense Cafe. But this one doesn't smell like intense cafe at all this is like a very different kind of like woody kind of like a cafe which is like in the olden times you're sitting and reading the newspaper it has a different vibe altogether people are comparing this to atelier cologne's cafe tuberosa not sure i don't know how that smells like or noir de noir by uh, tom ford it's the same dna but it's not exactly like noir de noir this is again like for me any time of the day any season because this one is more like on the woody side Plus the rose, but the oud is very, very, again, subtle and it's in a woody nature, not the oil nature. So I think this is like, it can be worn anytime during the day. Season also, I would say any season. Uh, this is definitely a unisex. This one, I can see like a guy wearing it as well. Uh, the vanilla, not so much, but this one for sure. My rating for this again is 10 out of 10. There's nothing like, see, the thing is, these are my favorite Kealis out of like all her Kealis. So. The projection is like three feet and the longevity again this is eight plus hours so very very good perfume high quality ouds if you want to smell what high quality ouds smell like go for one of the kiali oudgasms right go, go for the 10 ml because like one or two sprays of that is more than enough that's why like the price kind of justifies the bottles because they're very potent the next one on the list is sweet diamond <laughs> pepper <laughs> it's changed the color like so much you know and of course, because I have the 10ml, it's not in that bright pink color bottle, which I really love. 
<laughs> I wish I had that bottle, but no. Oh, this is like a strong, strong, strong rose. This is like rose dominant everything. It kind of feels like a mixture of Elixir 11 with some rose. And that rose is the kind of like the Nina Luigi Lexas rose kind of one. You know, absolute, the absolute version, the dark one. But at the same time, it has something in the background which is very different. Which is why I feel it's some spices. It makes it feel very Indian at the same time. Like it feels like a very Indianish. Uh, uh, I'm saying this in the best way. Like it feels like the origin of the ingredients would be from India. You know, uh, this is considered to be a amber floral and sweet diamond pink pepper has been formulated like 25 times to make it like reach its perfection. Unfortunately, on Fragrantica, it's 3.87 and I can understand why because it will be a very polarizing scent. First of all, it's super rose, right? It's like high, high, high on rose notes. Like 40% of the perfume or 50% of the perfume is rose and the rest 50% is all the other ingredients. So obviously like the top notes are pink pepper, bergamot, royal lily and saffron, middle notes of Bulgarian rose, rose centifolia, magnolia and vanilla orchid, base notes of sandalwood, patchouli, sensual musk and golden amber. So these all are like really, really thick, except for I think saffron and bergamot. All these other notes are like so heavy. So this perfume does smell very weighing down, right? It smells like a heavy night perfume. And as a matter of fact, I feel like this perfume should be worn only in a party, like somewhere you're going to enjoy, somewhere where you're going to meet friends or maybe your loved ones or your significant other, but like, or even on date nights or something like that, but in a place where it's fun, like New Year, Eve gala dinner comes to mind in my head when I smell this perfume it smells again like super upscale it smells like an expensive perfume and like for the price I think right now it's like I'm not sure if it's discounted or not like I don't want to give any false information but this one is a very complicated fragrance when you smell it like step by step you keep smelling different different ingredients especially if you read the notes you're like you will be able to identify all the notes but at the same time when you smell it, it's like a whole amalgamation of like a lot of different notes. That's what maybe polarizes it because many people will think it, it's a very, very complicated fragrance. Plus, it's a, again, an acquired taste because this one is so heavy on rose that people who do not like rose scents will get absolutely repulsed by it. This would be their nightmare, right? This again, I feel is unisex, but it's leaning heavily towards feminine. But I think a guy can pull this off easily, especially Middle Eastern men. The projection of this one is insane. It's like five feet. Longevity also is like eight hours plus. My rating for this is like nine out of 10, just because this is like a very selective perfume. I cannot wear it all the time, right? So yeah. And this one was like, I told you guys, this is a Leo fragrance and I chose Angelina Jolie for this, like as a celebrity, because this reminds me so much of her, like, like very powerful, very out there, very dominating, very like, uh, like that her energy is like a powerful one. And this reminds me of her. The next one is a perfume I should have done right in the beginning. <laughs> but because I'm dumb, I have not. And this is the Wedding Silk Santal 36. This was the perfume Mona Katan wore on her wedding day. And I know everybody is obsessed with this perfume. Everybody loves this fragrance like crazy. Because why not? It's like the perfect sandalwood fragrance out there. Smells literally like a bride. It smells like a bride with her white dress and like, you know, the happiness and the positive energy surrounding her, the glow surrounding her, her friends, her loved ones. Like, it's such a stunning perfume and it's sold out. And before I could get my hands on it because I was being greedy and I was waiting for a sale and it's just gone now. And everybody, it's like sold out everywhere. And I wish somehow I could get my hands on this perfume because this is one of those perfumes that you will miss because it's not there anymore in the market. Now when I had initially reviewed this, I had not made notes and uh, it wasn't available on Fragrantica either. Right now it's there on Fragrantica and it's got 4.34 which is like very popular. The top notes for this are Champagne, Freesia and Blackcurrant. Middle notes of Nectarine, Praline, Jasmine and Orange Blossom and May Rose and the base notes of vanilla, sugar, musk, sandalwood, amberwood and oak moss. So initially it starts off like very like effervescent, fresh because of that champagne note. Of course the freesia, the nectarine all are blackcurrant. It's all giving it that initial fruity blast but in moderation. It smells like a rosé or like some kind of drink that you would have and pop open. And then it starts settling down to a very vanillic sandalwood. And that's like the 
perfect base note that you can think of as a bride. The vanilla, the sugar, the musk, the sandalwood, everything gets like super creamy, super sweet. It becomes very like beautiful. Like the only word I can use is like beautiful. It just You just know it's a very pretty bride. It's a very dainty, soft, ethereal, like all these kind of words like coming in my mind. Like you know how when you see a bride and you look at her in awe, you know, the groom looks at her in awe and it's just that like stunning, stunning, stunning perfume. So the top notes and everything, the top notes, middle notes, everything like goes off like like really, really fast. And the vanilla, sugar, musk, sandalwood, amberwood and oak moss, that's what stays in this. The oak moss is not very disturbing, it's there, but it's like, like playing a role but not disturbing you. So this for me is like something, it's a regret of mine because I really wish I had bought this perfume. The projection is like 2 to 3 feet, so it's a very, no, actually the projection is like less than 2 feet because it's a very intimate fragrance. And the longevity, I would say this is like 6 hours but it'll stay on your skin like forever like 24 hours and somebody needs to keep spraying respraying you this throughout your wedding you know this would also make a very good like the bridesmaids uh, scent and all of them if they wear just this one scent it would be amazing this to me although i think of it as a daytime uh, spring wedding but i think this can be worn anytime like anytime day night any weather blah 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 10 out of 10 amazing such a gorgeous scent very very beautiful and i the moment it comes online i'm gonna buy it i promise <laughs> such a beautiful one and of course the celebrity i thought of mona katan in her wedding dress because i was like what else can you think of like that's her perfume like on for her day you know amazing next up is vanilla royal sugar patchouli 64 so they this was probably one of those that took the longest time to perfect and i wonder why uh it is a beautiful fragrance but as the name says Vanilla, sugar, patchouli. <laughs> That's what this smells like. So this is classified as an amber vanilla and it's got 3.85. Rightfully so because this is a polarizing scent again. People who like dark noir kind of scents, they're going to love this perfume. But if you are not very fond of patchouli, if you're not very fond of dark fragrances, if you don't like perfumes that smell a little mature, like because this does smell a little mature, it has the same kind of matureness that Grand Soir has. So if you like the matureness of Grand Soir and you don't consider that to be mature, you're going to love this fragrance because it does have the same matureness of Grand Soir. As a matter of fact, this is very much giving me the base feeling, the base notes of uh, Grand Soir. The top notes for this are Vanilla Orchid, Creamy Jasmine, Golden Rum. Middle notes of Vanilla Infusion, Vanilla Sur Absolu, uh, Tonka Bina Cot, Spicy Rose Bouquet, Smoky Leather, Creme Brulee. And the base notes of sugared patchouli, musk, brown sugar, amber, royal oud. There's so many things in it. Like it's insane. And now you kind of get why I'm saying it smells like Grand Soir, right? It's the same vibe. It's not the same DNA probably because this is like more leaning towards like vanilla and patchouli. Uh, the other one was more like oud and spices. But this one is like coming very close to reminding me of Grand Soir. It's the same kind of perfume. Also, I know that some Penhaligon smells like this, but I forgot which one. But like this has that Penhaligon kind of vibe, you know? You know how Vanilla 28 like slowly, slowly approaches you and you like smell it nicely and you get the whiffs of it and you just love it. This one is a train that just hit you and you died. You didn't, you don't even know where you went. You just like gone, you know? <laughs> that was such a bad thing to say. But like this one actually hits you like that because the Vanilla is so, 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 so strong. People say it's the same vanilla which is in Vanilla 20. I doubt it. Or maybe it is the same vanilla, but because it's mixed with so many other ingredients, like it just smells like a different story altogether. So no, this is nothing like Vanilla 20. It's not even the same category. It's not trying to be sweet and gentle. It's not trying to be like calm and warm and like a hug or something. This one is like a, look at me. I'm like someone, you know, like very brazen, very like, I don't care what people say. Think of Grand Swap, the kind of vibe you get same compared to this one this is most definitely for cooler weather you can wear during daytime and night uh, but i think this should be strictly worn like during the end of fall and winter because it's a really 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 thick uh, scent which is like very dark people when they smell you on this with this perfume on they will remember you they cannot forget you because this perfume just is so weird like it just smells very different it smells like a niche perfume that this is like the kind of perfumes i expect from kiali brand you know because they're very very like like when sweet diamond pepper was like released i actually was like whoa like it smells so different it doesn't smell like anything else i've smelled before same thing with other like the oudgasm the entire range is so different you know this is what you expect from her and sugar patchouli was one of them and this is i think um 
what do you call it a, a limited edition as well this one is 100 percent unisex both men and women can wear this the projection is like a good four feet because it travels slow but it travels for sure and the longevity is like eight plus hours like it'll go on it will not come off your skin like you have to just like <laughs> wear it and leave it right but my rating for this would be nine out of ten for the same reason because it cannot be worn all year long it cannot be worn everywhere you will have to be mindful of where you wear this and who you wear it around and the celebrity that came to mind my mind was really rihanna because like like you know the way her personality is and i don't know i feel her skin might smell like this last but not the least is my favorite amber and that's the invite only amber 23 this is a spicy amber and on Fragrantica, it's only got 3.75. <laughs> so not many people like it and I understand why. Because it's a mature scent. It smells very, very mature. It smells like definitely a perfume that's meant for people who are in, in their 30s or above. Not young people. But this is probably one of the best ambers I've laid my nose upon. It's so unique. Kind of smells like a Lush store. Like I know for sure... There's something in the Lush store that smells like this. I've used one of the bath bombs, it smells like this. The top notes are tobacco leaf, sour cherry, honey, chocolate and hazelnut. Just imagine that. Middle notes of Ceylon cinnamon, May rose, damask rose and citrus leaf. Base notes of amber, agarwood, vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, cypriol oil, patchouli and musk. Oh, like you know like, oh my gosh, like the tobacco. Honey, chocolate, hazelnut, sour cherry. Cinnamon, rose, you know, the agarwood, amber, vanilla, sandalwood, cypriol oil, patchouli musk, everything is there. And I can smell it, but I can't individually pinpoint them like if I don't read the notes like again and again, you know. So I just feel like this is such a complicated amber. I love amber fragrances, but like for the same reason that they can go mature like really fast. In my opinion, I don't find this mature. If you think the smell around uh, a lush store is mature, you will think this is mature. Otherwise, it kind of smells the same way. Like literally, it smells like fresh ingredients, you know, like fresh tobacco, fresh cinnamon, fresh honey, chocolate, hazelnut, like right there with all like those handmade things that Lush has. This is super dark, super heavy, super incensey. It is earthy, it is boozy. It has so many different qualities that it's an adventure. For me, this perfume is like an adventure. It is a beautiful fragrance which I probably cannot live without. This is a 10 out of 10 for me out of all her fragrances. And yes, the fact that it's got 3.75 on Fragrantica bothers me, but I don't care. As long as I like the perfume, why not, you know? So I do think this is amazing. It projects a lot. It's three feet projection. Longevity, 12 plus hours. Again, it's like the dry down is something that you've never smelled before. It's going to stay on your skin and you've never smelled it before. I promise you. Such a beautiful amber. This is an autumn winter wear, by the way. Again, this is unisex, by the way. And the celebrity I thought of was Helen Mirren. Like, she's badass. She's so beautiful. She's so badass. She can do whatever she wants. Like, she can demand anything and it'll be done. She's like the, the royal queen highness. <laughs> we bow to you, you know? She gives that impression. And the moment I smell this, I remembered her. Now, that again kind of goes back to, so you think it's mature? No, it's not. Like, Helen Mirren just as her personality and everything. I'm not talking about her age or anything, right? So, guys, that's it for today. This was my roundup of 7 Kealis. The reason why I could not do five, you can kind of imagine, is so tough. I also wanted to add Utopia Coco Vanille because as a summer fragrance, that's like such a beautiful fragrance, right? But then I did not have space. So <laughs> that one was like, just like was there waiting. But we can honorably mention that. That's one of my favorites as well. So that's it for today, guys. I'll see you tomorrow again for another one of my Advent <laughs> videos. And I'll see you then. Bye.